We want to go over the solutions to the trig limit worksheets that I posted on Canvas, starting with these two basic rules that we developed, that the limit of the sine theta over theta as theta goes to zero, and the limit of one minus cos theta over theta as theta goes to zero. These are absolute facts that we've proved. And what our goal is in any limit statement involving trig is to get one of these or both in the statement, then we can evaluate them directly and then just simply use rules of limits, such as the limit of a sum is the sum of the limits, the limit of a product is the product of the limits, and so on. So we want to go through each of these and talk about what algebra we are actually allowed to perform. So the first problem, the limit as y goes to zero of the sine of 4y over y. Now, when we're looking at this problem, you say, oh, this is simple. I just apply this rule here, except that the argument is 4y and the denominator is y. And the theta has to be exactly the same in all three positions, but it's not. Now, we could try to do some trig expansion of the sine of 4y, but that would be very complicated. A much easier way to do this would simply be to multiply numerator and denominator by 4 because all I'm doing is multiplying by one. But then we can take this four and move it completely outside the limit because we know the limit of a scalar times a function is the scalar times the limit. So this is four times the limit as y goes to zero of the sine of four y over four y. Now we're almost there, except this isn't a four y. But one of the really important limit properties we also established is that if I said, let's say just in general, x is approaching a, then any scalar multiple of x must be approaching the same scalar multiple of a. This is an absolute. If a value approaches a number, then any multiple of that value must approach a multiple of that number. So if y is approaching 0, then 4y must be approaching 4 times 0, or 0. Meaning this last statement I could now write as 4 times the limit as 4y approaches 0 of the sine of 4y over 4y. And now you notice that my angle, my argument is 4y. It shows up here. It shows up here. Meaning 4y is my theta. I can now evaluate this directly. We have exactly the limit statement that we needed, and the value of that statement is one. So my final answer is four times one, or four, which is a really beautiful way to manipulate the algebra as well as this first result. Now let's continue. All right, the next problem, we want the limit as x goes to zero of the tangent of 3x over x. Now, if that had been the sign, we'd do exactly the same thing we did in the last problem, except this is tangent, and we don't have a rule governing tangent. But we can use the fact that the tangent of theta is the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. So we can restate this as the sine of 3x over x times 1 over the cosine of 3x. There's my sine over cosine. Now, we know that the limit of a product is the product of the limits. So we can break this up into separate limits. And the nice thing here is that the cosine function is approaching one, not zero. So this limit is easy to evaluate. Now let's go back to this one. Similar to what we did in the last problem, I can multiply numerator and denominator by three, and then I can take this three completely out of the limit statement. So this would become three times the limit as x goes to zero 
of the sine of 3x over 3x times the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over the cosine of 3x. Now, this one is easy to evaluate. This one, we're almost there. So then we use the fact that as x goes to 0, 3 times x approaches 3 times 0. So I can simply replace this. And now, just like in the previous problem, I have exactly the limit statement that I need. Theta approaches 0, sine theta over theta. So this quantity right here is 3 times 1. And as x approaches 0, the cosine of 0 is 1. So this quantity is approaching 1. And the final answer, therefore, is simply 3. OK? All right, now the next problem, we want to find the limit as z approaches pi of the sine of z minus pi over z minus pi. Now this one's a bit odd because my angle clearly looks like it's pi, but actually my argument is z minus pi. Now I could try to do an expansion, a sine expansion, the alpha, using the alpha beta identities. The problem is the denominator is not going to be very cooperative. As z approaches pi, this is approaching sine zero over zero, hmm. but z is approaching pi. Now remember another one of those limit rules is, we said is if x is approaching a, then any multiple of x approaches the multiple of a. But what if I add anything to x? In other words, x plus b, and that must approach a plus b. So if x is approaching a, then x plus b is approaching a plus b. So that means if z is approaching pi, then z minus pi must be approaching pi minus pi or zero. So if z is approaching pi, then z minus pi is approaching zero. So we want to rewrite this statement as the limit as z minus pi approaches zero of the sine of z minus pi over z minus pi. And now you notice that my argument, z minus pi, that's my angle, that's my theta. And that's the part that's approaching zero, and that is my denominator. So this is now of the form, the limit as theta approaches zero of sine theta over theta, and that answer is simply one. I do not need to perform any more work on that problem. So that's actually one of the shorter ones. Let's try another one. Let's look at the limit as x approaches zero of the secant of x minus one over x. Now, quick check, the secant of zero is one. So my numerator is approaching zero, my denominator is approaching zero. It's the correct form, but this doesn't look like either one of the two limit identities we started with. But of the two, sine theta over theta or one minus cos theta over theta, this definitely looks more like the cosine one. So how can I manipulate that? Well, I can use the fact that the secant function I know is the reciprocal of the cosine. So what if I simply multiply numerator and denominator oops, by the cosine of x? Okay, do that within the limit. Then this would become the limit as x goes to zero of secant x times cosine x is one minus the cosine x over x times the cosine x. Now this is almost exactly what I need it to be. I need the part where it's 1 minus cos x over x. So I'll use the fact that the limit of the product is the product of the limits and rewrite this as 1 minus the cos x over x times the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over 
the cosine of x. Now stare at that for a moment. Algebraically, the first statement is equal to the second statement, and that statement algebraically is equal to that statement. So I can now evaluate this. This is the standalone limit I needed. That value is zero. As x approaches zero, the cosine function approaches one, so that value is one, and therefore my final answer is simply zero times one. Okay. <clears throat> And the next one, let's look at the limit as z approaches zero of 2z over the sine of z. Now, this seems a little bit backward. We know how to evaluate sine theta over theta as theta approaches zero, but I've got this upside down. Now, let's use a very simple algebraic fact. It's always true. It is always true that A over B is one over B over A. Any quotient is equal to one over its reciprocal. And the second fact is that the limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limits. So this would simply be one over the limit as Z goes to zero of sine Z over two Z. Again, let's stare at that for a moment. The limit of, think of this as A over B is one over the limit of B over A. Now, all I need is the additional two, which I will either put a two here or take this two and factor it out. Now this two can be factored out in front that way because it's a constant, okay? So what that does is that gives us something of the form one over one half the limit as z goes to zero of the sine z over z. And again, this is exactly the quantity I needed. That limit is exactly equal to one. So I have one over a half times one, which is two. And beautiful manipulation here. And we have time for one more. And let's do the limit as x approaches zero of one minus the cosine of x over x squared. Now that looks almost like a limit we already know. We know the limit one minus cos x over x, but that x squared isn't gonna be entirely helpful. Now, at first glance, it seems reasonable that I could break this up into the product of two limits. In other words, it seems reasonable that I could take this route right here. And that would be true mathematically. And then I can say the limit of this quantity times the limit of this quantity. The problem is the second quantity would be approaching one over zero. And the limit cannot be undefined. That, that there's something wrong with that one. That's not going to work. Although it does seem logical, it won't work in this case. So instead, what we can do is see if we can make this look like the sine function. Particularly, what if I multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the numerator? And we take this route. So if we do this, now I'll have something in the form one minus the square of the cosine function over x squared times one plus the cosine function. You say, well, that's not really helpful yet. No, but one minus the square of the cosine function, we know is the sine squared. And then I have x squared one plus the cosine. Now we know the limit of the product is the product of the limits. So this we can rewrite as the limit as x goes to zero of sine squared x over x squared times the limit as x goes to zero of one over one plus cos x. And again, the cosine function is approaching one, so that does not cause a problem. 
Now, unfortunately, this isn't exactly what I want. This is the square of what I want, and that's the square of what I want. But we know that the limit of the product is the product of the limits, and the limit of a square is the square of the limits. So right now, that quantity is, if I write it out, that is sine x over x quantity squared right here, which means that I can treat this as the limit as x goes to zero of sine x over x, the whole thing squared. The limit of the quantity squared is the same as squaring the limit. We could have also written it, we could have also written this as the limit of sine x over x times the limit of sine x over x. It would have been the same thing. So at this point, I have my standalone limit, that is equal to one, and I'm squaring it. That right there is one over one plus one. So my final answer is actually a half. And this concludes the worksheet. Hopefully you're able to do these on your own at some point.